Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Whitby Traction Engine Rally. And this is the first of the parades here in the main ring. And uh, what a wonderful selection of tractors we've got arriving in the ring right now, headed up by the lovely Leyland 154. And uh, those little tractors uh, really designed and built for the, the horticultural side, uh, the small holders, uh, yet more importantly for the groundsmen. Uh, quite often they would have had the turf tyres on rather than the open tread tyres. And they would have pulled gang mowers about uh, football fields, cricket fields, and still makes hay every year. Now sticking with the horticultural section is the old gut rod. And the, uh, I think it's called a Moto Standard, that's the fourth tractor in the line up there. Now in the foreign tractors we've got a rather forlorn looking vehicle there. And uh, it's certainly, uh, what, has, what it looks like is the case. It's been caught in a fire at that one. And that's the uh, uh, rather foreign looking tractor with the red wheels. But we're going to find out a bit more about that one. Talking of wheels, I've uh, got some rather unusual, almost bicycle looking tyres on the little grey Fergie there. They're known as row crop tyres. Now what we do seem to have loads and loads of this weekend is uh, Ford Dexters and Massey Ferguson 35s. Two tractors built to compete with each other and just going in front of the commentary box is uh, one of the red and grey ones is also what's called a high clearance tractor as well. So if we've convinced you to enter into the world of vintage tractors, I could recommend nothing more than starting with a little grey Ferguson tractor. £2,000 for a runner, costs about £40 a year to uh, insure, MOT exempt and tax exempt, and you are on the road. It does put the onus on the driver to keep that vehicle in a roadworthy condition, but many hours of fun can be had on the little grey Ferguson. There's even a song uh, being written about the little grey Ferguson. So just behind the Ferguson is the little BMC, looking very similar to the Leyland 154 that headed up our parade earlier on. And that is the vehicle that still makes here every year. So it just shows that even the smallest of tractors uh, can do the biggest of jobs. And here time, especially on, well, on all farms, including the hill farms, is usually the busiest time of the year. Uh, and for us, that's just after lambing time. Now I have a small collection of tractors up in Huddersfield. We live not so far away from that farm in the middle of the motorway. Not lucky enough to live there, uh, but I live about two miles away from it. Uh, so we've had a 105 mile trip to be here this weekend. And uh, thankfully I haven't had to drive a tractor here. When the show was at Pickering, it used to take us 10 hours to get the tractors from Huddersfield up to Pickering. And that's when we were young and daft. Uh, it was great going, but I tell you what, it was no fun driving home after a heavy weekend. Now, as the days go on here at Whitby, we gain more and more tractors, because a lot of people, they're at work uh, yesterday, so there were hordes of tractors rolling in yesterday afternoon and evening. Uh, so we had an excellent turnout yesterday, but we're going to have an even better turnout today. And it's wonderful to see all our drivers up at this hour, uh, first in the arena. Usually we're having to drag them out of the caravan saying, come on, we need you in the arena. Uh, but look at the turnout here. It's absolutely wonderful. I've just got the first, well, the only miniature in the parade, and that is uh, the little grey tractor, and that's actually got a Morris 8 engine in it. Uh, so that's just going in front of the commentary box as we speak. Now, we're just going past the beer tent, that's Barry on his Lister auto truck. And you may wonder why there's a Lister auto truck in the parade of tractors. But if it wasn't for the little Lister auto truck, a lot of these tractors wouldn't be here today. Before the days of the forklift truck, 
The Lister Auto Truck uh, would, was built in its tens of thousands and it would have been working in the factories uh, where these tractors were built, getting the parts out of the parts store and onto the production line. So we've fetched Barry in with the little Lister Auto Truck and we're going to talk about that uh, over the course of the next three quarters of an hour or so. So there's a little clet track coming around the corner towards the commentary box and that's the only tractor I believe in the uh, parade that hasn't got any uh, rubber tyres on it. This is a tractor vehicle. And also you can see that he is missing a steering wheel as well. into the foreign worlds of tractors, eh, sometimes I do get a little bit mistaken. Here's the Ford Major, the, for, the 4000. I've uh, got a rather fetching transport box on the back because one of the highlights of coming up to Whitby is of course having a buzz round Whitby on the tractor. And uh, it's perfectly legal to carry passengers in the back of that as well. Uh, so that will have been having a buzz round Whitby last night and no doubt they'll be going out again uh, later on this evening. When Henry Ford was introducing its products to the UK market, there was a spurious company trading under the name of Ford, which he didn't want to associate with. Uh, so he traded as Fordson. As soon as the legal team got on the job and got rid of that name, he then uh, adopted the original name of Ford. That's going to be an interesting one to talk about. Another one, the vintage tractor pulling sledge, uh, also got the plastic pig on the back. And uh, we call them the plastic pigs because they are nigh on entirely made of fiberglass. If ever you get one of them in an accident, all you need is a brush, uh, a brush and dust pan, and uh, that's generally it. Sweep it into a plastic bag and you're away. So we've pretty much got them all parked up now. We're going to have a bit of a drive through, have a chat to our drivers. Uh, now the previous commentator of this show has had extensive knowledge of all of these tractors that I do not have. So we're going to try and get a bit of a snippet from each of our drivers to find out a bit more about their tractors. And I'm also going to remember as much as I can from yesterday as well. Uh, so this is the first tractor. This is a little BMC. Uh, come out, let's have a look at you and this tractor is in its working clothes. Now I have a couple of tractors in their working clothes and uh, every so often rub them over uh, with a bit of an oily rag from some old engine oil that will preserve them forever. It's great to see them in this condition because a little bit later on we're going to see one of these uh, that's all done up. So you're going to see uh, both sides. Now just tell us a bit about this tractor. Excellent. So this is all part of the BMC uh, Nuffield Austin Leyland Stable. Uh, so built in the UK and a very strong tractor. Quite an affordable tractor back in its day. Uh, but also stood the test of time. Still makes hay every year, still a working tractor. Now the iconic little grey Fergie next. This is known as a TEF. That stands for Tractor England. F is the code for diesel engine. Uh, that engine was designed purely for the Grey Ferguson tractor, however it did find its way into a couple of standard uh, van and cars, believe it or not. Uh, slightly uprated. Uh, these are the ones that came for about 13 miles an hour on the road, and as you can see this one has been used for road runs and it's also supporting the Alzheimer's Society. Uh, that uh, transport box on the back has got a little bench seat in it, so you can take about three or four passengers. If you take four passengers, you do have a bit, it's a bit light on the steering. Now the David Brown Cropmaster, one of my favourite tractors here this weekend. Uh, built at Huddersfield by Mr David Brown. Now David Brown was actually a, a gearbox man. He didn't want to make tractors, it was only Mr Ferguson that came up to see him and said I could really do it somewhere to build a tractor. Ferguson didn't particularly get on with Mr Brown. This is the, uh, a couple of tractors later after the fallout. And this is the Cropmaster, got two seats, quite a nippy tractor as well this one, capable of about 16 16, possibly 18 miles an hour on the road. Uh, just tell us a quick bit about this. Yeah, this is a 1948 Cropmaster. 
I've had it since five and a half years, renovated it, it's a lovely little tractor. We did a charity run from Barnsley to Whitby to this field, raising money for Alzheimer's on the 15th of June. And a rela reliable little tool that was going Excellent. And uh, uh, quite an interesting way of getting off these tractors. You kind of have to sit on the wing and you've got a little slide down to the ground. Uh, but when you're actually on there, even in the worst of weathers, that scuttle is designed to get all the heat from the engine and it shoves it onto the driver. So it's a very comfortable tractor to drive as well. Oh, and he's got a canvas cab to throw over at the same time. Has it got a little plastic window to look out of? Right, we'll have a demonstration. There we go. So that's how it's... Uh, Gets all the warm air around him. Oh, it's even got arms as well. Oh no, it hasn't. There we go. <laughs> That's for when you're bird watching on your tractor. <laughs> You'll also notice the transport box on the back. Now that's actually a, a transport box that's been bought and, and purchased rather than made. And in there is sporting an old caravan cushion. So you see all the different sorts of, uh, of transport boxes used uh, to transport passengers. However, that does actually have a passenger seat on it as well. So the Farmall Cub. Now the McCormick International Company started in 1902 in America. Uh, however, this tractor is a UK tractor, I, I believe. French tractor uh, should have known that. And just have a look at it. Everything's over to one side, built for the horticultural industries, and the toolbar would actually be in the middle. So you could attach your implements uh, down underneath, and the driver can see straight down at what he's doing. A very clever idea, uh, but does result in quite an obscure looking tractor. Uh, you're not turning around all the time. It is capable of pulling a horse drawn type implement, uh, but a lot easier to mount everything straight underneath the tractor. So the Ferguson 135, now I believe this will have a Perkins engine in it. This is when uh, Ferguson decided that they were going to buy their engines in rather than develop them themselves. Uh, now Ferguson went from quite rounded uh, tractors to what was in time quite a stylish, angular look about them. Right, tell us a quick bit about this. It's a 1968 MF135 multi-power. It was built in Banner Lane, Coventry. Um, it's 45 and a half horsepower and it has the multi-power which makes it a bit faster on the roads but you have no engine braking in low multi. Excellent and uh, once again got a transport box on the back of there uh, so we're going to have a look at all the different transport boxes and a few months ago uh, there was there was a road run and there was quite a bad accident involving a trailer uh, so quite often now on the road runs the trailers are not allowed anymore. Uh, so people have been building uh, transport boxes frantically for the past few weeks in order to carry their passengers. So the Alice 2 D270 now, this is very loosely, well not very loosely, uh, but uh, loosely based on the Alice B, quite a wispy tractor. Uh, this particular tractor was bought as a partially restored non-runner from the Driffield Vintage Sale about 10 years ago. After a large quantity of moss was removed from the radiator, it went to Henry Watson of Fixendale for an overhaul and a respray. Uh, so a very interesting tractor these. Alice Chalmers didn't really move with the times. Uh, look right next to it, you've got the Fergusons, they're not too uh, far ahead when it comes to build dates uh, but uh, there wasn't much in the way of three-point linkages and st even starter motors on these tractors uh, a lot of them have been upgraded now uh, however Alice Chalmers didn't move with the times and unfortunately they folded ultimately in 1985 but uh, uh, they did struggle on for many years and they originated in America however that is a UK tractor so now we've got the Fordson Dexter. Now, uh, yesterday we had loads of Fordson Dexters. Don't seem to have quite as many uh, today. Just tell us a, a quick snippet about this. Yeah, basically, 1958, um, under slung exhaust, uh, and it originally was fitted with a mill loader, which wasn't safe to use, but it comes up. Excellent, yeah, so the, the loaders on these, uh, a loader on any tractor, especially if you're going to fetch it to a show or go on the road, it can make the tractor behave a bit like an animal, uh, not, the, not the, the nicest thing to drive on the road. And you will notice with this one, as the driver said, it's got an underslung exhaust, which is not everybody's cup of tea, most of the exhaust come up the side. Why is that? Because when you're making hay and it's got an underslung exhaust, you're going to quite easily set, set uh, fire to the field. And I have an old tractor at home with an underslung exhaust. I reversed it into the shed the other day and and forgot the dog bed was underneath it. Uh, there was an awful smell of smoke and then I finally realised the dog bed was underneath it. Uh, so yeah, there's many hazards to having an underswept exhaust on a tractor. So the 
Ferguson 35, built to compete with the uh, Ford and Dexter. Now, some may say it was a better tractor, some may say it wasn't. Right, what do you think? Do you think the 35 or the Dexter was better? Uh, probably the Dexter, but this 35 sounds all right, but they weren't renounced that very well. It did very nearly finish Ferguson off with this four-cylinder engine, and uh, it's quite ironic, really, that you sat on the 35 and you think that the Dexter's the better tractor. So that is the gold belly. That was the interim between the little grey Ferguson and the, well, shall we say red. This is the rusty red uh, 35. And I was saying about the tractors in the working clothes, I wipe them over with an oily rag every so often and it will preserve them uh, forevermore. Now this has got the, uh, the, shall we say, the old fashioned petrol TVO engine system in it. Right, tell us a bit about this tractor. Uh, this tractor was my granddad's tractor from Fishing Monkton near uh, Ripon. And it was the first thing I ever drove when I was eight years old. I'm not massively big into my tractors, I like the old wagons and everything, but it's a family heirloom, do you know what I mean? Absolutely, and great fun to drive as well. And it's quite unusual to see a 35 with a petrol paraffin system on it. There's actually two tanks in there. You start up on petrol. Once it warms up, turn it over to TVO, which stands for Tractor Vaporising Oil. Uh, you mix that up using uh, paraffin or, or 28 second heating oil uh, more currently in today's climate. And um, once it warms up, it'll run on that. You've just got to remember to turn it back onto petrol before you switch the engine off, because otherwise you've got to bleed it all through before you start it back up. Now the BMC, the Nuffield, big old tractor, uh, very, very durable, very affordable as well. Built to compete with the uh, likes of the Ford and Major. This uh, 60 horsepower is this one. Got the four, uh, three cylinder diesel, four cylinder diesel, got the shared exhaust port on the middle there. Uh, quite a fast tractor as well, capable of about 18 miles an hour on the road. Uh, great to see you here. So one in original condition, another one slightly smaller in uh, gleaming condition, almost fresh out of the uh, restoration workshop. Uh, this is the three-cylinder model, this one, isn't it? Yeah, we're right. Uh, and uh, only, how long has it been out of restoration? Wednesday night it got finished. Have we still got orange paint under the fingernails? <laughs> So it's first time out after being restored, finished on the Wednesday night. So we've got a brace of Ferguson 35s now, uh, so this is the red and grey versions. And in there it's got the three cylinder diesel, which a lot would have said uh, is the better engine. They have the three cylinder and the four cylinder. We were talking to the previous guy and he said that they have some problems with that four cylinder engine. But here's a three cylinder one and got a lovely uh, engine note to it as well. So next up we've got the four-cylinder variant. This was the problem one. However, there is a modification that can be done where they actually drill the head and they fit something called a glow plug in, which preheats the engine, uh, the, the chamber, the combustion chamber, uh, ready for the, the diesel to be injected and starts it a lot better. So they did overcome those issues and these tractors are still very desirable. I've also got, this is actually an original Ferguson transport box on the back. We seem to have transport boxes as a theme today. Uh, what's the name of your co-pilot? Now the dog is appropriately named Fergie. 